Hey guys, this is your host Gooby, and welcome to the Tomb Balloon Podcast, our outlet to discuss, theorize, and enjoy our favorite webtoons with the occasional anime and manga sprinkled in between. In this week's episode, we will be chatting about several episodes from the webtoon series Let's Play. Since it has returned from hiatus at the beginning of this month, I felt it was only natural to end off the month just exploring the spicy chapters that have come our way. If you love Let's Play and are craving even more content, then I suggest you go and check out the creator's Patreon. Mongrel Marie offers exclusive content that any reader would enjoy in case they need their Let's Play fix. I will be sure to include all of the author's means of support in the description box below. So we will be discussing chapters 128, 129, 130, and 131. I will include timestamps below in case you have a particular chapter you would like to listen to the most. I will be sure to include a short summary of each chapter before diving into the discussion for each segment. If you have not checked out the recent releases of Let's Play, then I definitely recommend that you read those chapters before listening to this episode of the podcast, because there will be spoilers. You have been warned. Now, let's talk Let's Play by Mongrel Marie. Chapter 128 plops us right into the night following the second season's insane cliffhanger. Sam wakes up to find herself in bed with Charles. She has a small collection of what happened the following night that we get to see with a series of flashbacks. By the looks of it, nothing eventful happened other than Charles consoling a drunk, crying Sam after rejecting her offer. Sam is freaking out so much in bed, she then proceeds to blush so hard, she unleashes a beacon of light. This of course startles the two of them and they then get into some spicy moments at the end of the chapter. Okay, so my very first reaction to this chapter was just an overexcited squeal. <laughs> For one, I am so happy that it has finally returned from its hiatus, and two, we finally get to know what happens after that eventful cliffhanger. I had faith in Mongi that in no way was anything non-consensual going to happen. I found the aftermath quite hilarious since she proceeds to cry over swans and whiskey. I think that the developments that happened that night detailed a few things for me. Sam still has a long way to go in the sense of loving herself. I can tell that the rejection she suffered from Link back in the beginning of the series must still trail her mind because her reaction to Charles's refusal emitted that same energy. It, it could be the alcohol talking, but I know Sam still struggles with her self-esteem. Um, she's making strides and it doesn't help that she has not only one encounter of rejection, but she has said in the past that she dealt with confessing her feelings to a boy and he didn't return them at all. That can definitely play a role on her self-image and it can put a toll on her. It can be a challenge to grow from that for sure and she's working very hard to love herself more and I think she is making great strides in boosting her confidence as we have saw through the entire second season. I appreciate that Charles respects her and acknowledges the need for her consent, you know, because you can't consent when you are drunk, and he also brings a lot of importance to the fact that this would be her first time. I think it was funny when she woke up in the morning beside him because, of course, he teases her so well. And then that hilarious gag of her outrageous blush o meter. <laughs> I think that is such a fun way to ease the tension. And this is what 
gives the story its charm. It's not afraid to exaggerate these elements. <laughs> also, I noticed that those folks that saw the beacon of light were dressed up in what I'm assuming is some sort of Monty Python-esque gear. I I'm not too sure. I just know it it's just like a cultural reference, I'm assuming. I, I could be wrong, but I do recall that in a past interview that Monkey had with Girl Wonder, go check out her podcast, slight plug right there. <laughs> uh, I think it was the first one she had with her, but you can go check. Mongi mentions that she would like to bring in conventions into the story. I suspect that these characters may allude to that. Then there is that one time in the very beginning of the series where Angela had talked about designing their cosplay for an upcoming convention. With this in mind, I think we'll be getting a possible convention arc. I would think it would be about video games and the sorts, and that would be very interesting and I would love to see what happens. Plus, it would make sense for all of Marshall's influencer friends to be visiting so much. Sam and Charles end up falling on the floor because why not? <laughs> and the two have a spicy moment where Charles asks if it would be okay for him to touch her, which is a very attractive thing to ask for consent before initiating in the devil's tango. <laughs> so take notes, fellas. And also, if this were a live action sitcom, you would hear that ooh <laughs> in the background. I wish I could get the sound for that in this podcast because <laughs> this whole chapter just screamed that funny background sound that the audience does, at least the robotic background sound. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can understand what I'm referencing. Like if you watch iCarly, it happens a lot when like characters kiss and stuff. And it happens a lot with like any sitcom series you have ever seen. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate so much that Charles asks for consent. And I think it was such a really nice thing to see these two bond in such a sweet and adorable way. And with that in mind, I think it's nice that with him asking her if these things are okay for him to do, it helps her ease in a little bit more with their relationship dynamic. Because I know that Charles has a lot of experience and for him to be so considerate of her and her needs, it is so healthy and so helpful for her to, I guess, push those boundaries that she hasn't been able to cross not bad ones, <laughs> but these are things I guess she wants to learn and that she wants to venture onto with Charles. And I think it's a nice dynamic and I can't wait to see more of the relationship develop. And with that, let's move on to the next segment. Chapter 129 takes us, the readers, to where Samuel and his wife are staying at. Samuel feels a disturbance in the force when he notices the beacon of light via Sam's exuberant blushing. He insists that he needs to go leave and, and save his baby girl. Thanks to Sam's wing woman of a mom, she convinces Samuel to stay by essentially throwing one of her sparkles as a shudikin at him. Samuel is convinced and he stays with his wife. We pan back to find Charles and Sam getting a little hot and heavy. They have some cute interactions and Charles starts to escalate it a little bit with some neck kissing. Sam eventually is a little overwhelmed by it all and gives in. The chapter ends off with a shaken Sam and a symbolic orchid. So, the first part of this episode was really comedic. I loved how Sam's mom is a complete boss and breaks the fourth wall momentarily to keep her husband with her. I was not expecting her to just grab her sparkle and throw it, but you know what? It was satisfying to watch. I was wondering if Samuel did end up trying to go save 
Sam, then how was he going to go about that? Was he going to swim across ocean waters since the airplane might not be fast enough? <laughs> they are in Hawaii, I believe, so I'd assume he'd have to travel cross country. Well, thankfully, Sam's mom is a great wing woman and wishes her the opportunity to flourish in her independence. I really feel like her mother is super considerate of Sam because I think she knows that Sam is a very capable young woman and wants her to venture on her own path. I'd assume her husband, of course, is a helicopter parent, but I think her mom is more lax in this family dynamic. The episode didn't have a lot to cover considering it was mostly sequences in regards to Sam and Charles's scenes. I like that Sam likes to enjoy Charles's face <laughs> and essentially she adores his presence. It's sweet and Charles appreciates this from her. It's a side he probably isn't used to it with all of his other sexual endeavors and I think this is what melts his heart away and makes him fall for Sam even more. She likes him for him and the sexual desire is like an added bonus <laughs> and at the very end she kind of gives in to him when he is proceeding to give her a hickey. I think since this is her first time having intimacy with anybody, it was overwhelming. All of that stimulation was a lot for her body and she easily flowered. <laughs> I guess it's a good way to put it. Um, honestly, I noticed she was quite shaken up, but I just assume the activity was racy and considering her inexperience, I would think that she need to warm up into it a little bit more. But like I said, most of this episode was just about going a little nutty over this because I think everyone in the fandom was going crazy because it was like the most, other than I think towards the end of the second season finale this is probably like the most heated action out of both of them <laughs> uh, i know like everyone here is just completely going insane in the comment section because you see everyone just going dude we're going to horny jail <laughs> and it, it just makes me laugh so much and i think for me reading this episode was not only comedic it was steamy and the comments just made it land so much more because it was just so funny and just so great to enjoy. I love seeing their relationship flourish and I love that her mom is so supportive of Sam because she wants her to grow and be independent because this is probably something that Sam has craved for a long time and I'm pretty sure her mom must know about Samuel's helicopter parent tendencies even at Sam's age and probably is well aware of her son's helicopter brother tendencies <laughs> and so it's cool to see not only what Sam and Charles were doing but what her mother and Samuel were doing and I why can I not recall her mother's name I, I will figure that out later <laughs> but this chapter was fun and I can't wait to talk about the other chapters, so let's move on to the next segment. Chapter 130 covers a different character. Marshall. This chapter dives into a nightmare Marshall is having after his previous breakup with Monica. We have a young Marshall doodling away on his bedroom floor while his parents are undergoing an argument over his sister's academics. Marshall walks to his sister's room and finds his sister Eva crying while trying to block out the noise with some headphones. Marshall walks down the hallway until his father scares him off. Eva then has a confrontation with their mother, which leads to Eva shutting the door on her. 
Eventually, Marshall attempts to comfort his mom by showing her his art and telling her some jokes. Eventually, the dream escalates with Marshall's face cracking and his mother is running away from him. Adult Eva appears out of nowhere and mentions and reminds him that his name is no longer Benjamin. And then Marshall is crushed by his father, both literally and metaphorically shattered completely into pieces. This eventually wakes him and the chapter ends off with him calling his mom. Considering the events of the last chapter, I found it so funny that not only were the comments going crazy in the last chapter, but this chapter, they had the comments going even crazier <laughs> because it almost felt like they were blue balled, I guess is a good way to put it with this episode. <laughs> you can find quite a bit of the readers saying they were just reading the hot and heavy stuff and then they were just bonked in the head. <laughs> it was hilarious, but I think this episode was a good change of pace. I don't mind seeing Sam and Charles' relationship flourish and bloom, but I have been really curious to see what Marshall has been up to since Monica broke off their relationship. This is our first time seeing Marshall's parents. And by the looks of it, he came from a very strict household that upheld themselves very highly. His sister especially was under a lot of pressure growing up and Marshall grew to see this as a kid. He also witnessed his own mother having to get the short end of the stick as she had to not only deal with her husband's high standards of their family and especially their children, but she also had to handle being shut out by her own daughter. Her husband demanded so much out of their children. It's no wonder their relationships are so strained with this man. Marshall, or in this time, Benjamin, or go by Ben, did his best to comfort his mother and he had a strong relationship with her. I'd assume they are on good speaking terms since he called her on the phone and they had that adorable little line pop up again. I lava you. It's so sweet to see that he still has a support system because I know he is going to need it. I think the breakup with Monica was something that really hurt my heart in the series. I seriously love Monica and I actually hope that these two can reconcile. He mentions in his nightmares, um, they are becoming more frequent since Monica left. And my guess is it's harder to sleep when you don't have your person right next to you. Like it added some comfort and I think it helped him calm down and relax at night. I feel like with him mentioning that his nightmares have gotten worse, it just alludes to the fact that his nightmares were always pretty bad until he was with Monica. And you know, he does a lot of other things to distract himself and sleeping at night isn't one of those times where you can really distract yourself. It can be like an opening for fear and night terrors and things that he suffers at night. And something I wanted to kind of touch on is, has Marshall ever sought counseling? I don't know if this has ever been hinted in the series because has he addressed these issues with a professional? Or has he thought that since games give him some joy in life, getting professional help didn't seem necessary to him? I I'm not sure. I, I haven't seen any hints of him actually seeking help in the past, but I hope with time he'll consider it because I think confronting his inner demons will help him grow a lot more. Mental health is so important. It is what keeps the body and soul in balance, and when one is affected, then the other is as well. His heart condition is a result of large amounts of stress and battling his own inner demons. I think his foul relationship with his father has him deal with these feelings of inadequacy, that he isn't good enough 
becoming a YouTuber or is it VTuber of a sort helps him build a personality that feels good and builds confidence and has good relationships with fans and he gets good positive feedback instead of this constant harsh negative criticism from his own dad with the way his father exclaims that he is a mistake in the nightmare I feel like his dad only caused him to feel like he'll never feel fulfilled. Games are an escape and fill that void momentarily, but he can't push those feelings away like that. I do hope to see more of Marshall's growth in this season, and I enjoy his story so far, and I like to see him actually get in touch with Monica again when he is good and ready, like Fez from that 70s show. <laughs> and with that said, let's move on to the next segment. Chapter 131, the final segment, starts off with Sam in Charles's apartment, taking a whiff of her inhaler. She seems distraught after her moment in chapter 129. Sam is recalling the other night a bit more, and we get a series of flashbacks showing all of Sam's many different phases as a drunk chick. See chapter 127 for reference. We also get to see her encounter with Charles that ends off on the second season. As she is collecting her thoughts, Charles brings her a cup of coffee. He eventually notices the tension in the air and Sam is trying to brush off the awkwardness. Charles teases Sam for a bit due to her coating the cotton in early morning dew. The two feel at ease after some joking and honesty and they snuggle for a little bit. Eventually, Sam realizes that she forgot about her raid and Bowser whilst bunting Charles in the head. This chapter was a lot of fun. We finally get to touch on the events of 129, but we also get some very wholesome scenes with the charm ship. Just the usual cuddles, and I love seeing Charles just melt over Sam being herself. You can see a subtle hint of those chains that are holding Charles right after Sam suggests that Charles teaches her how to accommodate his needs. I feel like his chains represent a couple of things. They could represent that he is still chained to his last marriage. You know that phrase, the old ball and chain? Well, in Charles's case, there is no ball, just the chain, and he's still dragging this weight around. It must be hard to let go of a relationship that Charles, I assume, must have believed would last forever. I mean, it was his sweetheart, the love of his life. And I mean, I feel like if you plan on committing to someone through marriage, the thought of them just being the only one for you would be the only thing on your mind. Finding the love of his life in bed with another man scarred him. He has a difficult time to commit again because he doesn't want to get hurt. And I, you know what? I don't blame him. He has no strings attached relations with many women since it would lead to less pain. And most of the time, these relationships work out. But for Sam, it's different. She tugs on those chains but in a way that has him lingering for that second chance at commitment, that second chance at having a relationship with someone and sharing a life with somebody and thinking that there is a possibility it could last forever. It, but I mean, it could probably not lead to marriage, but it could still be a relationship of a sort and it could still be fulfilling and it could still fill in that heart, that part of his heart that his ex crushed when she slept with the other man, when she cheated on him. And I feel like his chains are also a good way at showing what it is that he is trying to contain. I think Sam is unleashing her own control over his, the chains that hold him together. 
but not but not like in a malicious way but by kind of releasing him from those chains and kind of helping him let go the chains that have held him down for so long she's kind of helping him let those chains go because when you every time you ever see him like possibly swoon over Sam they clink I do wonder what it is that it's going to take to finally get him out of those chains because it's a work in progress. We slowly, every now and then, see the chains clink, but I don't think he's budged just yet. I think she pokes at certain areas that could free him, but he is the only one that will be able to fully let go and make that step to commit to Sam. Also, Poor Br Bowser, <laughs> I call him Browser. This whole escapade has been spontaneous and the poor dog must be so worried about Sam. He's probably worried like, oh my gosh, she abandoned me, which I don't think is the first thought that would come into Bowser's mind. I'm sure he knows that Sam is so loyal to him, <laughs> but he probably is like, oh my gosh, where's my owner? Something's happened to her. But you know, maybe he has Princess Peach to be there for him. Oh, you know, we could get a possible Bowser episode. I would love to see what he has been up to this whole time she has been out and about doing her crazy things. <laughs> and the raid will be an interesting thing to see since I feel like if Sam never misses out on a single raid, then her friends are going to go on full recon mode and they will be quite freaked since she never was able to let them know what was going on with her on her side of the story. And I hope we get to see Abe and Angela and Vicky and all of the other crew members. <laughs> uh, since I feel like they are really fun characters to read about. I really enjoy the side characters in this series. I think Mongi puts a lot of love and care into all of her characters, but I also feel like her attention to the side characters makes the story feel so much more whole and built. Like, I feel like she puts a lot of thought into her characters before she decides on inserting them, and they fulfill a role that will be kind of explained later on, because I feel like they all share a good part in Sam's life to help her grow as a person, and I love that. Plus, we get a lot of good comedy bits with the whole group. They're just hilarious. They're so funny and I love their interactions with Marshall. And I'm assuming we'll see them with Marshall once again in the future. So I wonder if when Sam heads back home, will she bump into Marshall? Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see in the next episodes. And I'm sorry guys that this episode is quite short. Uh, We've only gotten four episodes in this past month and I was hoping to build up a little bit more, but I was really excited to talk about Let's Play this month already and I was like, you know what, I can't wait anymore. I gotta talk about it. I gotta dish out the, the deets <laughs> and just completely go crazy over everything that's been happening. And I have been so pumped to read the new chapters and I hope that you all have enjoyed your time reading the chapters as well because Mongru Marie puts in a lot of work and it's always such a pleasurable experience to discuss Let's Play with you all. Also, this week has been a little hectic just because I decided to host another shameless self-promo event on my Instagram page. I usually like to read all of the webtoons I get recommended and I put in a lot of time to make sure I give everyone a very nice shout out for their webtoon specifically canvas ones and this week I got over 50 recommendations no I think even over 70 recommendations and so I had to pump out an episode whilst reading all these webtoons and give them proper shout outs so I'm sorry if my web episode is a little short but I promise next time it'll be longer and if you guys have a canvas webtoon go and recommend it whenever i host a shameless promo event because i want to read your webtoons and recommend them so you can boost your readership not to mention <laughs> it's a lot of work so i'm sorry if i'm a little slow with everything this week but i am so happy to talk with you guys and thank you for listening to the podcast you are the best you know what even though this is a short chapter i'm hoping to deliver more longer episodes 
in the future. <laughs> so hopefully we can all discuss more about Let's Play and just keep diving into the characters and the elements that happen within this story. So if you guys would like to answer some questions for me, I would love that. So what do you think is going to be the pivotal moment where Charles concedes and finally decides he will devote himself to Sam? Do you think he'll ever get that chance? Or is there the possibility of Charles taking that job offer he had been given back in episode 126? I'm really curious to see what you think. Also, what do you think of the charm ship? I honestly have a difficult time deciding on a ship that I like for this series because the thing is, I feel like every ship is plausible because uh, specifically Charles and Sam, they have good development and I like their dynamics. I think they're sweet together and I don't hate the ship. Like, I like the ship a lot. And honestly, I don't mind who she ends up with because I feel like she has good connections with everyone in her life. And I really want to see her grow. I think most of this story, even though it is romance based, I feel like it's got a lot to do with a lot of self-love and self-confidence. And I love Sam for going about this story and learning more about herself and just loving herself more. I think that's like my favorite part of the entire series. The romance is just like an exciting extra part to it, but I love different aspects of it. And I think that's why I enjoy this series a lot. Because to me, I feel like there is so much more that this series offers. And you know, the spicy moments, they're a bonus and you know, the romance and the development of it all is a bonus. My favorite ship that I think I like the most in this whole series and it completely demolished itself was Monica and Marshall. I did like them together. And I don't know if it's just because I love Monica. <laughs> she's like my favorite character and I'm sad that she's hurt and I'm sad that those two aren't together, but I hope that there will be good things to come for both of their characters in the future. So I would like to also know your favorite ships in the series. Do you like the charm ship? Do you like um, Samuel and his wife? I mean, they're like a pretty good ship themselves. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts and opinions of what we discussed today in this episode by messaging me through either of my social media handles. Both my Twitter and Instagram handles are at the Tomb Balloon. I would love to hear from you. Also, definitely tell me any other webtoons, anime, or manga you are interested in, and I may talk about them in future episodes. The Tomb Balloon Podcast can be listened to on SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and more. Now, let's end this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time to listen to my humble podcast. I look forward to talking with you again. This is the Toon Balloon Podcast. I was your host, Gooby. See you next time.